I'm Mark Evanstein with music.py, and in these videos, I'm going to be showing you how to connect Python to Ableton so that you can make music like this. So in this first part, we get to kick it off with the most exciting part, setting things up and adjusting your computer settings. So to start with, if I go over to Ableton right here, I've got a blank Ableton session with three MIDI parts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a drum kit on the first, a beautiful ethereal theremin whistle on the second track, and an electric bass on the third track. Next, I'm going to go over here and record enable all three of those tracks so that I can hear whatever they're playing. Okay, having done this, we need to set things up so that Python can talk to Ableton, and it's going to do so using MIDI. Now on a Mac, if you want to have programs talk to each other via MIDI, you do so via something called IAC. So to get IAC set up, we want to go to Audio MIDI Setup. And it's a little bit hidden. You have to actually go into the Window Show MIDI Studio. And here is the IAC driver. Notice it's grayed out. So double click on that. And over here, make sure to click Device is Online. Then add a few MIDI ports. We only really need one for this, but we might as well make, you know, three or four buses. Why the heck not? You can close this up. And now that the IAC driver has been connected, we can go into Ableton, and for each of these parts, we can say, listen to MIDI from IAC driver bus one. And then we're gonna put each of the instruments on a different MIDI channel. So we'll have the drums on channel one, the theremin on channel two, and the bass on channel three. This is pretty much everything we need to do to be set up in Ableton. Now let's make sure we're set up in Python. So all of the Python stuff I'm going to be doing is in this simple IDE called Thony. I like to use Thony to teach Python because it's a really simple, uncluttered interface. And to do all of the musical stuff we do in Python, we're going to use this library that I created called Scamp, Suite for Computer Assisted Music in Python. Now Scamp is available freely. You can install it via pip if you know what that means. And if you don't know what that means, in Thony there's a tool called Manage Packages which uses pip under the hood. And I can search for Scamp, click on it here, and click install. Of course, it's already installed on my computer. You also might want to install Scamp extensions. I don't think we're going to use that, but sometimes I do use that in my videos. Okay, having installed Scamp, I've got a simple script right here, which basically works like this. The first line imports everything from the Scamp libraries. The second line creates what's called a session object. You use the session to create instruments, to advance time, all of this good stuff. So we're creating a session object here with tempo equals 100 and storing it in the variable s. Next, we create our instruments. So this line right here creates a drum part. So we ask the session s to create a new MIDI part. We call it drums. We want it to send MIDI messages over IAC bus 1, that virtual MIDI cable in the computer that we just set up. We want it to start on channel 1 and use just one channel. Um, if this is a bit confusing to you, the reason that we have to specify this is that in Scamp, normally instruments use like eight channels. And the reason for this is that it's trying to manage complicated things like microtonality and pitch bends in a polyphonic setting. Okay, so great, we've got a drum part. A theremin part is also going to be over IAC bus one, but use channel two. And the bass part is going to use channel three. And then in order to play some notes and actually hear them from Ableton, all we have to do is ask one of the instruments to play a note. So this script, while true, means do this forever. So forever, it's going to play a note on the drums, play a note on the theremin, and play a note on the bass. The play note function takes pitch, volume, and duration. Pitch is a MIDI pitch. Volume goes from 0 to 1, and it kind of corresponds roughly to MIDI velocity, which is 0 to 127. And then duration is in beats at the current tempo, which is 100. By the way, on the drum part, Pitch actually is going to correspond to which drum instrument it's using. So is it a kick? Is it a snare? Is it a hi-hat? So let's take a listen to this and see how it sounds. So you can see the MIDI messages are going exactly where they need to go. Channels 1, 2, and 3. By the way, if you're intrigued by this combination of Python and music, consider taking my course on cadenze.com. It's a totally beginner-friendly way of learning Python while making music in the process. Because this video was so boring, let's just add in one thing to make it more interesting. Let's do some randomization. So I'm going to import the random library in Python. And then for the pitch of the drum, I'm going to do random.randint3645. 
So this is gonna choose a random integer from 36 to 45. So a bunch of different possible drum sounds. I'm actually gonna do the exact same thing for the bass part. And then for the theremin part, I'm gonna give it a list of 80, 78. This is going to do a glissando from 80 down to 78, whatever actual pitches those correspond to. Finally, let's randomize the durations as well. We can do this with random.uniform. So that takes two numbers, let's say 0.2 and 1.3, and it's going to give us a floating point random number in between those two numbers. So it could be any decimal. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to have all of the notes use a uniform random duration, and let's take a listen to this. Heck, let's just make it slightly more interesting and add an acceleration. So I say s.set tempo target 1000 over the course of 50 beats. Let's take a listen. Okay, I didn't quite think that through, but I think that's a good stopping place for today. Hope you all enjoyed this really boring setup video, and next time we're gonna get into the meat of it by creating a slap bass part. See you there. By the way, you can find all the code for this video series in the description, and you can get early access to the whole series, as well as other fun stuff, at my Patreon. Although, of course, the real reason to subscribe to my Patreon is to support the years of work I've put into Scamp. But hey, bonus stuff is nice too.